Hello. Welcome to our service this week. My name is Debbie Pow and I'm Associate Priest at St Mary's Chalcombe and St Stephen's Lansdowne. And it's wonderful to be able to welcome you to, to join together as we hear God's word and think about what that means for us. I've brought you here to a little mini orchard at the bottom uh, of my garden, somewhere to be in the shade. And I do hope that you've been able to find some shade and some cool this week in the uh, real melting heat that we've had yet again. This is a, a simple service. Uh, it's just the readings and uh, my sermon from our physical services this week and some prayers. We'll begin by taking a moment of silence and then a, a lovely prayer that I love to use as an opening that says so much about everything we, it's a condensed mini service if you like, that uh, sorry please come, accept me as we are and know that we're loved. So have a moment of quiet, then I will pray for us. And just, it's written in the first person, but take it as yours. Beloved one, let me be aware of you with me and within me. Let me attend to each part of my body all that is well and all that's poorly. Help me to let go of all in my life that lies in shadow. What I've done, what I've said, what I've thought. All that's not helpful that dishonours and mars your image in me. Have mercy on me. Let me trust your presence as I listen. Let me not be distracted from every clamouring, the clamour of every thought. But let my heart be still, my face unmasked, my mind unlearned. Let me not be afraid of all that I know I cannot be. But let me trust that I am enough, just as I am. To trust that you look on me, my beloved, with eyes that see, with eyes that love. For you are love itself. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Hebrews. Forgive me, I've got a little bit of a, a tight throat, so I hope you're able to hear well. So it's a reading from Hebrews that that uh, comes from Hebrews 11, chapter 11, beginning at verse 29. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they'd been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were being disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, and David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fires, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, 
put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not with they would not without us be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Our Gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, beginning at verse 49. Jesus says, I came to bring, to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish that it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptised, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, rather division. From now on, one, uh, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law in against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be a scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites. You who know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? I wonder of what you make of those, ch those passages. They're challenging, aren't they? I was having a, a le little reminiscence uh, a few days ago with some friends. We were remembering the phrases and images that had stayed with us and a surprising number were from adverts especially from the 70s and the 80s if you're of an older generation you may remember a hapless man having a, a rather disastrous sort of day when suddenly some little music an air on a g-string starts to play he takes out a packet of cigars and the words happiness is a cigar called Hamlet come, uh, come uh, across. Well, there's the one with a line of policemen's feet tired from a day on the beat, standing there motionless. A tankard of a certain lager is given to each of the officers and the feet begin to move. And we're told, Heineken refreshes the zipparts that the other beers cannot reach. And then there's the one, and forgive me if you find this not quite in your taste, of a lady wearing a bra. 
and we're told that she's shapelier because she's wearing a Playtex cross your heart bra that lifts and separates. I wonder if we make of this, this passage that Jesus was talking so much of division, whether that's what he's talking about, lifting and celebrating, separating. We know that he came down to earth to lift us up to be close to God. But what about the separating, the division? Certainly he's been talking in the preceding passages, if you read them, he talks about living God's way, being shapelier, being shaped by God and his values, living with justice, with integrity, with love and compassion for your, even for your enemy in the story of the Good Samaritan. He teaches about prayer and about not worrying, about giving our concerns to God about being generous rather than greedy and about waiting for his return. And we come through all those passages that sh are there to shape us and we come to this passage about bringing down fire from heaven and all about the division. And the, Jesus has just admonished two of his disciples, James and John, for talking about calling down fire from heaven to punish the uh, people who, who didn't receive them when he sent them out into villages to prepare his way. What are we to make of that? Especially when we consider Jesus' other words, other words that we prefer to remember. Words about peace, words that bookend Luke's gospel, that run throughout scripture about God's peace the angels announcing Jesus' birth, peace to, to earth. Jesus coming after his re resurrection and meeting his disciples and saying, peace be with you. And then we have this passage in the middle about pe not having peace and division. We like to look at Jesus as giving us those Hamlet moments when things go wrong, of sorting everything out for us. Or like the Heineken ad, the, the, the refreshment that he brings. And he does. But so often we like to think that he will just do it just like that. I wonder if you've ever asked him for patience, expecting that calm just to, to come miraculously. And instead, he gives us experiences that teach us patience. Not give it, but teach us. Jesus reaches out, he lifts us up, he restores us. But he never promises an easy journey. So when we come to these difficult, um, dis uh, difficult passages, we. We have to hold those things uh, in, that, in that mix when we try to understand them. And so often we need to look at the context that these passages, these words were spoken into or written into. And in this instance, Jesus, as Luke puts it, uh, has set his face towards Jerusalem. He is in his final few months, weeks, months, he's journeying towards Jerusalem. He knows what is going to happen. He terms it his baptism, but he knows it's his shameful, agonizing crucifixion, his death, but also his resurrection. That's the work he has to do. Resurrection and ascension. And through that, he can send the Holy Spirit the fire that he talks about, to send that to us. It came down as, as like tongues of fire to the first disciples at Pentecost. And that's his spirit that is with us now. So he's speaking these words into that context of what he knows he has to go through and what is to come. 
can understand the fire in that way of the fire of his spirit but what of division are we to take that literally and there are many in the church who do take those words literally that give that argue that it gives us license to divide us the russian orthodox church has had very similar views towards the more liberal views of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and some of that sadly is behind the war in Ukraine. I don't know if you've been following the Lambeth Conference. There were certainly parts of the global south who would very happily have divided from the Anglican Communion because their understanding and their reading of scripture is quite literal and they, their understanding of homosexuality is therefore taken very literally. The language, there, there, has some very, there has been some very strong language of rightness and of others wrongness. And you'll find that those divisions are within the Church of England too. You may have friends who think in and who for whom those values are important. But it, we have to, it, the Lambeth Conference, Archbishop Justin Welby, with his uh, previous experience of reconciliation, was able to lead those, um, those bishops to a place where they could at least see that others who held a different uh, opinion and approach had also approached scripture very carefully, very prayerfully, that they had uh, also studied but come to a different conclusion. So they were able to go away still with their thoughts and understanding, but with a better, slightly better understanding of uh, where others were. And there are still those tensions but we're better together. And God is so vast and so outside in so many ways of our understanding. We have so much to learn from others who understand him slightly differently to ourselves. It's a little bit like a diamond. Each facet faces a different way, but it's with each, each facet together that gives the diamond its brilliance. One of the wonderful things about Jesus is that he was and is fully God, but also fully human. He knows what it's like to live as, as a human being and to live among human beings. He knows us in all our loveliness and in our flaws. And so when we look at a passage, where his comments in a passage like this, and we know uh, the, the context uh, and, and, all, and all the background uh, and the sweep of scripture. We can see that he can talk about division more. You know, he knows that as humans, we, we love to separate ourselves from one another. We, we love to congregate with people who are similar to ourselves and, and, and to divide ourselves. So in a passage like this, when it goes against the general sweep of scripture and the general sweep of what we know of what Jesus uh, is like and works for, perhaps we can understand it more easily as Jesus understanding just how we are and that with the fire that comes from his Holy Spirit that changed his disciples and, and so many of us who follow him uh, so dramatically, uh, and when he calls us into living in a way that's countercultural, and you can understand how that can be divisive in families. So perhaps his, his comments on division are more that this is descriptive, it's what's, what may happen, what's likely to happen, than, rather than prescriptive, then this is what should happen. And when we look at the context of the day, because we always need to look at that context, and we see that, and it's the same for parts of many parts of the world today still, to follow Jesus means at least 
tensions and divisions in family at worst and very often the, the actual reality is loss of life for following Jesus. I read a lovely book um, not that long ago uh, called I Dare to Call Him Father. There's a, a, a book within two books together. Uh, it's by uh, Bill Chris Shake, who was a promise, prominent uh, of prominent birth in the uh, in Pakistan, a very devout Muslim family, and she searched. Uh, she became interested in Issa, uh, which is the uh, name Jesus is given in uh, the Quran, and he is spoken of as a prophet. And she, as she discovered Jesus, her book is about her discovery of God and Jesus and their love for her. Um, but also the challenges that uh, meant for her and her ultimate escape from uh, Pakistan, where she would have lost her life as many, um, and as many did and do uh, because of they follow the Christian faith. So Jesus is writing into that context too. He knows that he's um, so very special that it will cause uh, divisions to follow him. And yet, whilst he doesn't call, call us to an easy journey, he does promise to be with us in his Holy Spirit. So he talks about when uh, it is seeing the signs. When things are hard, it's difficult to see that he's with us sometimes. But the reality is that he is. And that we need to hold on to that and to allow his love to shape us. That we can share that love with others. Amen. come to our time of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we come before you and we thank you for your word, for your love, and that you are with us. We thank you for your many gifts that you give us. The gift of the Holy Spirit amongst others. Lord, we pray for our churches. For our families. And our friends. For all who see you differently. Lord, lead us together that we may know you more fully. Lord, we pray for our nation and for all the nations. Pray for your healing, for what is past and for what still corrodes in the present. Pray that where there is division, we may find your reconciliation. May we learn to walk with your values and as a nation to govern ourselves with honesty, respect for one another and a sensitivity to needs. Lord, be present in the daily living of our homes, our families and our relationships. Pray we'd help us to be more trustworthy in our friendships and to strengthen our resolve to live our faith in action. Lord, we bring before you 
our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith in you. I pray for those organizations that work to help. Pray for your protection and for your love to abound. pray for those who feel excluded from family or friendships or church. For those who are lonely. And for those who are experiencing difficult times. I pray for all who are ill, especially those known to each one of us. Let's have a moment to bring them before God. I pray for your healing hand, your love and your peace. And we remember those who've completed their earthly life in faith and now see you face to face as they know the peace of your eternity. And may their loved ones know your holding in their grieving. We pray together with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And a blessing. May the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that knowing his love, broad and long, deep and high, beyond all knowledge, may you be filled with all the fullness of God and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. <laughs>